when television really was it, it was still had that feeling of, boy, this is just incredible. Who could have ever, it was still so new that it, it, made, it made you think of what you could do with it. You know, but still it had become sound enough that you knew it was going to last. It's not going away. Uh, it was attracting a lot of people with a lot of good ideas. And a lot of shows uh, started appearing on the, the different, um, was mostly was Channel 5 and Channel 7, which was, uh, Channel 7 was the ABC outlet um, WMAL at the time. I think they've changed the call letters. But uh, it just proved that if you put a country show on in D.C., um, you were successful. I mean, you got more money than anyone else, and you uh, drew larger crowds than anyone else. Um, and there were a lot of little local shows, like Cactus Mats, Red Barn, uh, the Hayloff Conservatory of Musical Interpretations, which I think that was the very, very first show that featured any uh, any country. Or back then, it really was hillbilly. It was just very basic uh, country music. And then Jimmy Dean came along. Now Jimmy is from Texas. But he was stationed in the, uh, he was in the Air Force, stationed at Bowling Field in, uh, in Washington. So when he got discharged, he stayed in D.C., formed a band, and uh, started becoming popular. He had a radio show that was on five days a week. And um, so he approached me, and I had a, a little band of my own playing clubs and things, and, and doing doing real good for that, for that level of, of uh, success. And he approached me and wanted me to go to work for him. And it was, you know, uh, sort of serious, but sort of like, you know, if you ever feel like making a change, you know, this, why don't we play together? And finally, it dawned on me that I would had reached just about as far as I could go in that area, and I had no means of getting out. So uh, he approached me one day and caught me at the right time, and uh, he said, look, we're doing radio, we're getting drawing big crowds, and we're getting ready to start a television show five days a week. Well, we've been playing some clubs around D.C., uh, and I had been playing with Jimmy around D.C. We were playing sort of the upper upper crust of the uh, of the nightclubs, and we were playing a place called Waldrops on Tuesday night, which is not one of the biggest nights in any town, but uh, we were drawing a decent crowd. And we went on the air on television on that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. No, I'm sorry. The first Monday, we went on the air on that Monday. The next day was Tuesday. And we told them Monday night we were going to be at Waldrop's on Tuesday. When we got to Waldrop's Tuesday night to go in, there was a line of traffic for two miles. You could not get within two miles of this place. You know, and we'd had decent crowds, but Lord, nothing like that. I'm talking decent crowd, two or three hundred people. And here, they, they had to turn it over, had to turn the audience over two or three times because the, these other people had driven so far and they says, we're not leaving if we don't get in to see these guys who are so great, you know, from the television thing. And it just grew, and that's what that's where Jimmy, I noticed back then, looking back on him, the rest of us in the band would go out after and maybe uh, hang out and have a couple of drinks and, 
and then go on. I noticed that Jimmy would stay maybe for a drink, and he'd go home. He'd go to bed early, get up early. He'd get on the phone and start talking to people who he may have met that day and to see what they had that he could use. He knew where he was going, and that's the first time that I knew there was more to music than just taking your instrument and going out and playing, putting the instrument back in the case and going home. It's a business to it. Well, from that local television show, Jimmy was signed by CBS into the early morning show, and then they took him to, to New York and he had an afternoon show. And, and that's what started his career. Television also started his career. Now, how long did you remain with Jimmy? I was with Jimmy uh, close to two years. And the reason I laugh is because uh, he knew where he, where he was going. He knew that the future took a lot of dedication, a lot of work. You had to be where you, were, you said you were going to be at a certain time. Well, I was still a kid. I didn't have many uh, obligations. I didn't need a whole lot of money just enough to have a good time. And, uh, and he kept putting up with it. I'd, I'd wind up late and, uh, and he'd say, Clark, I'm telling you that uh, I'm not gonna put up with this. I said, oh, Jim, I said, now look, when I get here, I may be fine. What I did was I cut everything to the wire. If I was gonna meet him at the television station, I would, um, I'd leave 10 minutes before. Now, if I didn't catch a red light or if a pedestrian didn't step out in front of me, I could maybe just make it, but it was, I was never that lucky. So I kept, I was late way too many times. And I've often said we never had a bad word, a crossword or, or anything. But he just said, Clark, I can't use you. We, had, we were gonna open uh, on a Sunday morning, a warehouse uh, opening that you could go buy a refrigerator, uh, washer, dryers, and all that kind of stuff, discount prices. And we were there to attract the people. Well, I got there late after a real fun Saturday night. This was a Sunday uh, morning, and he said, Clark, don't even think about taking it out of the case. I said, oh, come on, Jim, let me play a couple tunes with you. Maybe I'll hit a lick that you like. <laughs> and he said, I'm serious. I've had it. And he put his arm around me, and he said uh, later, and he said, uh, you're going to be a big star someday. He said, but right now, I can't afford you. I can't use you. you I just, he is a stickler on punctuality. You must be there on time. Did you make up with him later? I mean, did when, uh, like I say, we never had a crossword. Never had, and because of him, I had my first bona fide network television exposure. When Jack Parr left The Tonight Show and before Johnny Carson took over, there was a series of guest hosts. They were trying to, I've heard two versions that uh, Johnny Carson had to um, finish out his contract. And the other one was that they wanted to break that image of Parr to Carson and sort of give him a chance to, you know, like on a Friday night, Parr was there, Monday night, Carson is there, and, you know, smooth that shock over. Well, in that period, they used Jimmy as one of the, the guest hosts. And so he called me. I was out in Sapphire, Arizona. And he called, finally got a hold of me He's on a Thursday night. And he said, I've been trying to reach you for two weeks. He said, does your manager have an unlisted number? He said, you better get another one. He said, I, he finally tracked me down. He said, I want you on tomorrow night. So the guy at the club where I was working, he let me off. I flew a private airplane to Tucson, took a commercial flight to uh, Phoenix, then a commercial flight to Chicago, then Chicago, New York. 
And I got into New York about, it was early uh, on Friday, because, you know, they taped on, at 5 o'clock. So I got there in time. Uh, I think I didn't run through something one time. And then I uh, finally saw Jimmy. And uh, he put his arm around me and he said, how many tunes they got you down for? I said, they, well, they said they want me to do two. And then maybe a third one with you. You and I do something together. And he said, okay. He said, you'll do the two. And if that don't get them, you'll do two more. He said, because when you leave here tonight, you're going to be tall hog at the trough. In other words, I know how much talent you have, and if it, however long it takes to get it through to the other people, he said, that's how much time we're going to take. So that's, you know, people say, well, did you ever have a falling out? Did you ever? We never did. And that single uh, gesture of his really kick-started my career. I forget. We sold at the time like 20-some thousand albums of a current album that was out and had done pretty good. But with that one appearance on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Hostin sold an additional 20, 25,000 albums th the next day. So he goes down. Uh, is, ha, what, how did my career happen? Jimmy Dean punted it between the uprights and got me really going. 